Hey guys, it's Tuesday, 10, 11 p.m. on October 9th, 2018, and we're getting pretty close to the uh, quote-unquote hurricane. And I, I, just, I want to bring a couple of things to your attention. First and foremost, let's just look at what we're seeing on radar, okay? It's not a full cyclone yet. It's kind of like a semi-cyclone. It's not making a full circle. But as I predicted, they are, they're working it into a full cyclone. And none of the NOAA buoys, as of right now, anywhere in the area, are actually giving us readings of wind speeds that are consistent with a hurricane. Now let me just remind you that a hurricane is going to be 74 mile an hour winds sustained, which would be at least 64 knots. And let's just see, I'll just show you the, the raw numbers we have here. Wind speeds are in this column. Gusts, although they are important, they don't count towards what is actually measuring a hurricane. So it would have to be the numbers in this column, all right? So let's take a peek back here, and you'll see that this is very much becoming becoming a, a, a twister. It's, it's not hit hurricane strength yet, but let me just put a, let me put a big pause here, time out, and say, for everybody who's listening to this video, please, please know that I am not a meteorologist. If there are warnings in your area telling you to evacuate, please, please evacuate. Follow the instructions of the people who are assigned jurisdiction over your physical safety. I am not trying to encourage anybody to disobey those signs or those, those warnings or whatever. Okay, seriously, you have to get out of there. If they say to evacuate, please evacuate. The days of us being able to quote unquote ride out hurricanes, you guys, are done. You hear these old timers say, yeah, well, we've been riding out hurricanes since 1972. You guys, those hurricanes no longer exist. When those people were riding out hurricanes, they were literally riding out wind speeds in the 80s, 90s, 100 miles an hour, 120 miles an hour. When those guys were riding out hurricanes, they were literally riding out natural, natural disasters. But that is now what we're dealing with now. And, for example, the people in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, you guys, if they rode out Hurricane Katrina, they were not riding out winds. They would have needed a boat to ride out Hurricane Katrina because what they actually ended up doing was letting the levees go to drown those people. So the reason you have to evacuate is because the people who are telling you to evacuate have far more up their sleeve than a hurricane could ever throw at you with a punch. So please, just for the record, I am stating, in truth by grace here, saying, I'm, number one, I'm not a meteorologist. Number two, if the people around you have told you to evacuate, get out. Because your risk is not to a normal hurricane like they used to tell you. Like it used to be. Okay, these are not normal hurricanes. And that's, that's actually the point of all my videos, is to show you guys that there is something far more nefarious, far more dangerous happening here than what we used to rot out in 1972. Okay, these are not the hurricanes that we used to experience in 1972. In fact, this isn't a hurricane at all. So whatever is going to hit Tallahassee and drown Virginia a thousand miles away, it ain't the hurricane in 1972, folks. All right, now, that being said, let's just, let's just analyze this a little bit more. As I told you yesterday, you definitely have to have a cyclone. I mean, what defines a hurricane is a couple of things. It's 74 mile an hour sustained winds. In a, in a storm spinning in a circle. I mean, that's the nature of the shape of the wind. That's not what we're seeing here. So let's take a look at some of the updates here because what I find fascinating here is the word craft that they use in this. It would be interesting to have an attorney take this apart, but I, I'm sure that uh, if they were looking for culpability in, in false information here, Noah has covered their tracks pretty well, especially when they use words like this. Maximum sustained winds are near 120 miles an hour. Well, near is relative, you guys. Near. What, near what? This is, what's, what's more near? Is 60 mile an hour more near than 16 mile an hour? I mean, near is relative. If, you, if you're looking at yesterday's wind speeds, which were 16, as in 1.6 miles an hour, you know, versus what they're going to, what they had told us here at the four o'clock update, yes. You know, 60 miles an hour is much more near than the 16 of yesterday. So the speeds are increasing. You know, I could say it's near 500 miles an hour. It's all relative to what I think near is. So they've, they've left a big loophole with that word. But at four o'clock, 
for some reason at the, well, actually this is a four o'clock central time, five o'clock Eastern time. They gave us this paragraph, which I find just a golden nugget and I wanna take it apart for you. First of all, this hurricane force winds extend outward up to 45 miles an hour from the center and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 175 miles an hour. This is boilerplate, give or take 10 miles, 60 miles here and there. This is what they say in every one of the storm that I've tracked, okay? It's this sentence here that I'm so thrilled to take apart for you right here. Okay, it says Noah Buoy 42003 recently reported a one minute mean winds of 63 miles an hour and a wind gust of 74 miles an hour. Okay, first let me just break this down. We've got Noah Buoy 42003 and it's giving what it reported. Now I am cheering. I'm behind my, my keyboard here going, yay! Finally, we have Noah recognizing that they use these buoys to measure wind speeds. So for all of those people out there saying, but in truth, by grace, the Noah buoys couldn't possibly pick up the wind speeds. No, that's what they're there for, folks. Those buoys, those hundred million buoys we have all over the world are actually doing what they're supposed to do, and that is measure to see if there's a hurricane there. So to that part of the sentence, I'm very glad we have established evidence that Noah uses these buoys to measure wind speeds in a hurricane. It's the next part of the sentence that seems to me to have red flags all over it. Let me remind you, a hurricane is sustained winds of 74 miles an hour. So let me read this back to you. Recently reported a one minute mean winds of 63 miles an hour and wind gusts of 72 miles an hour. Note, Nowhere do they mention the magic number of 74 mile an hour sustained winds. But what's even more fascinating to me here, you guys, is it says a one minute mean winds. One minute mean, well, if you've been following this closely, let's go to 42003, like I've been following it closely, you will go to the buoy data center on this particular buoy and you will scroll down and see the last 24 hours worth of data from this buoy and you're going to notice how frequently these measurements are taken. 8.40, 8.30, 8.20, 8.10, 8.00, 7.50, 7.40. .40. So Noah is getting this information every 10 minutes. Why are they reporting a one minute mean? Well, if you're a quality black belt, <laughs> you'll, you'll know exactly why they're doing that. The black belt is a, is a, is a, is kind of a geeky number cruncher. It's a training that you get to uh, <laughs> to figure out when people are, are giving you a bunch of BS. And that's definitely what they're doing here. What they're doing, you guys, is they're taking a 10 minute reading and breaking it down to a mean, okay, which is kind of like an average. So let's find this place where we have the highest reading of the day. And I'll scroll down here and we'll see it's somewhere around 40, right here. Here's the highest reading of the day. It was at four o'clock, 46.6 sustained wind speed and 62.2 gust. So what they've done is they have literally averaged these numbers out to get a mean for a one minute reading so that they could boost the sustained wind speed up to, to reading 60, what was it? 63 miles an hour. In other words, they're number crunching to make it look worse than it is. Although, it's actually accurate. This is what they do like when they come out with a new car and they want to make it look more fuel efficient. You'll even see sometimes car manufacturers go to court to defend how they've, how they've number crunched in some really, really nefarious ways to make the, the fuel efficiency higher. Well, that's exactly what they're doing with these numbers and they're disclosing it to us by telling us that they're using minute means instead of the 10 minute increment of sustained winds. So in other words, all I'm telling you guys is that NOAA, for some reason, sees fit to exaggerate the numbers using truthful readings. And on the one hand, it's good because we can actually show that there is no hurricane here. But on the other hand, it's bad because you guys, there's no hurricane here. Now, if you look at how they're actually referring to the storm, look at how they call it. They call it Hurricane Michael. It's a capital H hurricane. You guys, that's like how Johnny Cash with a capital C he was Johnny Cash. It doesn't mean he was money. If it was a lowercase c, then it would be Johnny Cash, like Monopoly money with a lower M. 
Okay, this is a hurricane with a capital H. You could call it, you could call it Donkey Michael. Or you could call it Drizzle Michael. You could call it Blizzard Michael. You could call it whatever you want as long as you capitalized the first letter and the second letter, it's its name. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the thing that it says it is. Now, I know this might seem technical, but you guys, there are, this is, the devil is in the details, and these technical details actually count. Because yesterday, there was no hurricane over Cuba. As I showed you, Pinar del Rio, you guys, only had wind speeds of 16 miles an hour when the eye, quote unquote, eye of this hurricane, capital H, was going through. For some reason, you guys, our government has is exercising some sort of uh, insider information to forecast what is going to happen by saying something is happening, which technically is misleading to you guys. Now, it doesn't mean that the dangers don't exist, and I really don't want anybody to get that confused with what I'm trying to point out here. What I'm trying to point out, my, my biggest emphasis to you guys, is that somehow our government knew that the storm was going to happen and reported that it was happening at least 24 hours before it, it started happening. And even right now at 10.22 p.m. on October 9th, 2018, I'm going to show you that there is no hurricane here. It kind of sort of looks like a hurricane, but if we go to the actual raw numbers of the buoys that are near this thing, and this is these are the raw data feeds that are coming that are compiled by NOAA itself, giving us observations near capital H Hurricane Michael. Okay, we're going to look at these wind speeds and we're going to see 36.9, 38.9, 40.8. That's not a hurricane, you guys. These are a good 20 mile an hour lower than, or 20 knots lower than a hurricane. Now, a couple of other things I want to point out here, some more geeky number stuff here. The highest wind speed we got was actually from this 42003. And it was for 46.6. Let's look at that on our knots converter here. 46.6 knots. 46.6 knots. It's 53 miles an hour. Now that's nothing to shake a stick at. That is that is a real strong wind. Okay, and there there's a storm brewing here, no doubt about it. So 53 mile an hour winds, you guys, happened when the temperature of the water was 82.2. This is the water temperature here. And you can see this, I just want to point this out. I just think it's fascinating that as the temperature drops, so do the wind speeds. Now that doesn't give us any reassurance that this storm isn't going to get much bigger. It might, it could very well, but, and especially since 82 mile or 80, 82 degree temperatures are going to be far more likely as this thing approaches shore. So I suspect that they are going to, as they keep, I don't know if this particular radar image has it, but earlier there was a, image where you could see these straight lines shooting through the storm like um you know like they're like like like, like something's actually propelling it but i must have lost it off that um off the screen so as the storm gets pushed further up to the coast the temperature of the water is going to be warmer and i wouldn't be surprised to see the storm actually take a full 360 spin and actually start looking like a hurricane and have higher winds you know, and it's a tragedy. It, it is really, it's a tragedy, you guys, because the thing is, is that our government and the news has been reporting something as, as if it were happening when it hadn't even begun, which means that they have, now, I don't know about the reporters, maybe some of the meteorologists are, are, are dropping the ball, because if I have access to these tools, and the meteorologists out there definitely do too, but those guys are far more interested in listening to NASA, and I doubt those guys are going to be willing to risk their job, you know, and I'm sure they all believe NASA, and who would risk their job? I mean, the bottom line is that a storm is going to hit here, and technically, whether it's 75 or, or 80 miles an hour, or even 120 miles an hour, it's dangerous, so if they're giving you warnings to get out, get out, but but that's what I'm trying to point out, is that our government is, is giving far in advance as if they have a premonition and they're not telling us that a storm is going to start and then one is starting. They're actually telling us that a storm is there when it's not. And I don't mean that there's no, let me put it this way. Let me back that up. They're telling us that a hurricane, small H hurricane, 74 mile an hour wind speeds exists when it doesn't. Now it doesn't mean that it's not going to become one. It looks as if they're actually going to be able to make this at least come close to it.
But that's the bad part. I don't know why, but for some reason, I'm going to just tell you guys a story. When I was in high school, or high school or eighth grade, I think it was, well, maybe my freshman year, I don't remember. I went to an all-girls private Catholic school, very, you know, uniforms, really strict education. And we had this, this nun named Sister Kearns, and she made us take this test one day, and she handed out all us girls had to get this test, and she had us all sit down, and she told us, read the instructions from the beginning to the end. And she said, this is a timed test, and when I say time's up, then you come in. You bring the paper, you turn your test in. Well, we, we're supposed to read the instructions from the beginning to the end. And some of the girls started answering the questions really quick, and, and worked, 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 and then time was up. Well, some of the really smart girls got up from their, and the teacher said, you know, time's up. And so they, they brought their papers up, their tests up to the teacher and Sister Kearns, and some of them were giggling. And the rest of us who weren't giggling noticed that these girls were turning in blank tests. And the, re the reason was is because the instructions read all the way to the very end of the test said, if you've gotten to the very end of these instructions, do not answer any question on this test. Put your pencils down and wait for the teacher to tell you time is up and turn in your test with your name signed on it. And the rest of us got really busy right away. We didn't read the instructions all the way to the end like we were supposed to. And we failed that test. Now, back in those days, you guys, that was when grades counted. And I will never forget that as long as I live. I mean, I used to get in trouble if I didn't have a really, really good report card. So I, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that test ever. And uh, the, whole, the whole point of that test was to make us pay very close attention to the details. And unfortunately, that is not the way they've educated the American public in general. And what we're missing here is far more life-threatening than the actual storm itself. And once again, I'm not saying the storm isn't life-threatening. I don't know what they're going to do to those. Attention to the details of what is actually happening here. Is, is indicating that there's a much bigger problem than any hurricane could possibly face in the entire American public. So that's why I'm doing these videos, because there's something very, very wrong here. And um, that's that. I'll keep posted. I'll keep you guys posted on this as I watch this thing try really, really hard to make a full circle. We're just calling it Hurricane Mike right now because it's not a full circle. So when it makes a full circle, I'll let you know that Hurricane Michael is officially a hurricane if it hits wind speeds close. It might. It's it's cooking up. It's it's picking up pace here. And I think once it gets closer to warm water, it's going to be more trouble. So, all right, guys, have a good night. And um, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.